This video will cover the requirements to set up basic AS3X stabilization on a model equipped with the Spectrum AR637T receiver. The setup process is required before continuing to more advanced configurations such as heading hold and safe. Before continuing with this video, make sure you have the following. A Spectrum AR637T receiver, a Ford programming capable transmitter, a model that has already been configured to be flyable, at least one free channel, ideally two, a free switch, trimmer, knob, or slider, and optionally the Spectrum USB interface cable for updates that might come in the future, and the Spectrum programmer software to install these updates. As stated previously, we want to make sure that we've already set up a model before continuing. This includes having the aircraft type set up with our wing type and our tail type. And it also means making sure that our servo settings are set up correctly so that our reverse, travel, and sub trim are already configured for the model to fly properly. If this hasn't already been done, make sure you do that, and it also wouldn't hurt to fly the model beforehand. Once we have that, we can go through with the Ford programming setup. For the iX20, we'll go to Model Adjust, and you'll see the Ford programming menu here. If it's not there, you need to make sure that your receiver is already bound and on, otherwise the menu will not appear. So we'll go into that, we'll go to Gyro Settings, and we'll go to First Time Setup. You'll get a few warnings basically stating what we just went over, making sure your model has been set up. And then the first step is going to be setting up orientation. There are two possible methods to do this. The first is to use our auto detect method, which is a two step process, or to set it manually. We'll use the auto detect process. So the first step is to make sure the model is set level and then press continue. So we're already level, we're gonna press continue. Then hold the model nose down at 90 degrees and then press continue again. The orientation you see now is what the receiver has detected to be the orientation in relation to the model image displayed here. Verify that this is correct. Otherwise, you can select this line and change the orientation manually. This is what will be displayed if you choose the set orientation manually option. This is the correct orientation, so we'll select that and continue. And then finally, we'll choose a gain channel. Here you have multiple options. First, we'll want to choose a channel that's available. In this case, we'll use AUX2. And then, depending on what your transmitter has available, you'll want to either use a knob, a trimmer, or a slider, or a switch. Ideally, we use a knob or a trimmer, but if you don't have those available, you'll have to use a switch. I'll go over both methods of tuning, but for now, let's use a knob. Once that's done, hit apply. After completing this first time setup, the receiver will reboot. Note that the plane cycles through control surface movements once at startup. This indicates that AS3X is set up on this model. At this point, it would be a good idea to verify control surface movements. Set the gain channel you assigned to its 100% channel position, apply at least 30% throttle to enable the gyros, and then rotate the plane. With your gain set all the way up, your movements will be more or less visible. Make sure that when you rotate the plane right, the control surface counteract to roll it left. If you pitch up, the elevator should counteract to pitch down. If you yaw right, the rudder should counteract to yaw left. Once this is done, let's continue with the setup. Before continuing with the tuning process, let's take a look at some settings that have now become available to us in Ford Programming. Let's go to Ford Programming, Gyro Settings, and you'll note that there are a few menus here available now. For now, let's focus on AS3X settings. So here we have AS3X gains, priority, and gain sensitivity. Let's start with AS3X gains. 
These values basically determine your gain range that is accessible through the gain channel. So when my gain channel is all the way to negative 100%, I'm getting zero. When the gain channel is at 0%, I get half of these gains, so 20, 25, and 30. And when my gain channel is at 100%, I get all of these gains, so 40, 50, and 60. You can adjust these values as desired, but for now we'll leave them at the defaults. Next, let's talk about gain sensitivity. Let's say you're tuning your plane and you set your gains all the way to 100% and you still can't get it to oscillate. This means that you need to increase your gain range by using the gain sensitivity value. When I set this to two times, it basically means that these gain values are getting multiplied by two. So if I had this all the way at 100% and I used a gain multiplier of two, that means that my total gain is actually 200% on roll. For now, let's leave this at one. And if we start tuning the plan and notice that we're not reaching a point of oscillation, we can come back and increase this. Finally, let's look at priority. Priority basically determines how much your stick input takes away from the gyro effect. So the more stick input I apply with, so the more stick input I apply, the less the gyro tries to counteract the movements of the model. 160 priority means that between 0% stick input to 40% stick input, my gyro gain drops down to zero, and then anything beyond 40% stick input is no gyro gain at all. This is mainly a personal preference value. Your plane won't fly better or worse depending on the value, but it will have effects on it based on what you set. If you're not sure what to do with this value, the defaults of 160 are a good start. Now that we've covered the AS3X settings, let's go to system setup. Here you can change some of the existing settings that you had already set from the first time setup. The first one, relearn servo settings, allows you to reteach the receiver some settings that have changed on the transmitter, such as servo reversing, travel changes, subtrim, etc. If you make any of those changes, make sure to come here and use this relearn servo settings uh, function. Then we have orientation. If for whatever reason you change the orientation of the receiver within the plane, you can modify that here, just like it was in the first time setup. Gain channel select. This gives us the option of changing the channel that we assigned in the first time setup to adjust our gains. For now, we'll leave that as it is. We've skipped over some items here, but we'll come back to those in future videos. In the other settings section, there are some neat features to take note of as well. Here we can access fail-safe settings, which we'll review in a later video. You can remotely set your receiver into bind mode, but note that this will disconnect you from forward programming and you'll have to rebind to it in order to access this. You have a factory reset feature, which will clear out all receiver settings as if it were out of the box. You also have save and restore backup functions. These can be used in case you want to try testing a setting, but you're afraid you might break your current setup. If you save to backup, then tweak your setting and you don't like it, you can use the restore to back from backup function to restore the setup you had before. Now that we've covered those additional settings, we can go forward with tuning. If you plan on setting up safe and heading hold, you might want to skip this step. However, if all you want is basic AS3X stabilization, then let's continue with the tuning process. Now back in our first time setup procedure, we had assigned AUX2 with a knob. I've also gone ahead and assigned a switch to AUX3 to go over how tuning will work for people using a switch. First, let's start with the knob slash trimmer setup. You'll want to make sure that you're at a negative 100 position 
This will make your gain off. Then you'll take off the model and get to a safe altitude where you have enough room for recovery in case something goes wrong. Get up to relatively high speed and then start rolling the plane back and forth with sudden stops. As you're doing this, you'll want to start increasing the gain little by little. Eventually, you should reach a point where the model oscillates. If you get all the way to 100% and you still don't get oscillations, then you'll want to go back to forward programming and increase the gain sensitivity multiplier that we covered just previously. However, if you do reach a point where it starts oscillating as you stop from these sudden movements, you'll want to tone back the gain a little bit until the oscillations stop, and then take note of the value that you end up with. After you get that value, you'll want to go to Digital Switch Setup, choose a switch that you'll want to assign your gain to. In this case, I'll use switch C. Make sure you have your gain off position. If you're using a three position switch, you'll want to assign something to the middle position. It could be either your gain off position or gain on. In this case, I'm gonna make it gain off. For our gain on position, we'll want to assign the value that we recorded. In this case, 11%. So now when we switch our switch three positions, We'll have gain off, gain off, and then gain on at 11% gain channel value. This will basically imitate what the knob was set to when we found the nice gain position for our model. Finally, you'll want to go to channel assign, and where you had your knob assigned, you'll want to assign the new switch which you plan on using for your gain on and off. Now, as you can see in AUX2, I have my two positions of the switch with gain off and then gain on goes to 11%. Now you're done tuning for the knob or trimmer section. Now, if you're using a switch for gains, it's going to be a little more tedious to tune as you can't adjust the gain in flight. As you might note, I have gain off and full gain here but we don't want to start off flying with full gain as it might be too much for our model. So before we start, we'll want to go to digital switch setup, choose the switch that's assigned to our gain channel, in this case, switch A, and we'll want to change the gain on position to be, let's try negative 50%. This is basically one fourth of our gain. So we'll have a gain off, and one fourth of our gain. As this is set, we'll want to take off with negative 100, get the model in the air, get it at a safe altitude and relatively high speed, do our back and forth movements, and then switch our gain on. If the model doesn't oscillate, then we'll want to land, turn off our gain, go back to digital switch setup, and increase our gain. Go to zero now, zero percent, zero percent of the channel. This is half of our gain. So as you can see here, zero gain, half. We'll want to take off at no gains in the air, do our back and forth movements, and then flip our gain on. If the model oscillates, then we'll want to go back to digital switch setup and reduce that value a little bit. We want it to be higher than our initial value of negative 50%, but less than zero. You'll want to basically do the same process that was done with the knob, but you're going to have to land in between each adjustment. So it's a little more tedious and time consuming, but it's still possible. Once you've found the value that's right for your model, in this case, as we remembered with the knob, we're at 11%. This should be enough to have your model tuned. So you'll have a gain off position and a gain on. Once you've done this, this mainly targets roll, but you can go to your forward programming menu, AS3X settings, and AS3X gains, and you can also manually increase pitch and yaw if you feel like the ratios are not correct. 
But for most people, the ratios will work just fine, and roll is really what will make the biggest impact on the model flying nicely. Thanks for watching this video. If you look forward to having more advanced features such as heading hold, safe, etc., then please watch the next video which covers flight mode and advanced setup.